Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having an awesome day. Boy, do I have some goodies to share with you guys. Stay tuned. So before we jump into this fabulous haul video, I wanted to make sure that you guys are aware that if you are doing some awesome Posh Paper Lady inspired crafting, head on out to Instagram using the hashtag Posh Paper Lady inspired and upload your photos of the crafting that you are doing so that people can see the awesomeness that takes place in this group. Y'all, it's fabulous. So y'all, don't be shy. Put your photos out there using the hashtag Posh Paper Lady Inspired so that your wonderful, awesome creations can be looked at by so many people. Say, I'm going to have this stack of goodies here while I talk for a moment, just so that you don't have to look at my desk. So on Thursday, August 20th, my sister and I took a road trip and we had been planning on doing this before the virus and the pandemic. And of course, everything got delayed because of that. But I really needed to get out of the house because y'all, I have not been going many places. I'll hit the Dollar Tree every now and then. But for the most part, it's been my home and the studio because I really am trying to limit contact. But... I had to get out because sometimes you just go stir crazy and sometimes I have a need to feel and smell paper, if that makes any sense. So we headed out and I had already scouted the scrapbooking store in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is called Scrapbook Creations. And y'all, let me tell you, I walked through that door and I was in scrapbook heaven. Paper, embellishments, galore. It was everything that I needed in that moment. So they were having an awesome sale on top of it. And I picked up some wonderful, wonderful goodies. So I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of what I got from Scrapbook Creations in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Then we're going to head back to North Carolina because we also hit a scrapbooking store in North Carolina. So Quick overview here, and then we're gonna head on back to my home state. So, a lot of you will comment on how strong my sticker game is, and yes it is, because when I shop, I don't shop just for paper, I shop for stickers. So I picked up a whole bunch of sticker packs and sticker sheets so that I could use them in my project. And when I shopped, I made sure that I tried to shop for all seasons. So I hit all sections of the store because I wanted to pick up a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I was able to find these beautiful little Valentine hearts. That'll be perfect for the Valentine season. I am going to be making some baby albums. So I picked up some wonderful baby album embellishments. And then I picked up some Halloween embellishments. And guys, I'll let y'all in on a little secret. When I shop, I don't just buy one pack, especially when the deals are so great. I like to stock up on these. So I will typically, when I'm buying my sticker packs like this, I'll buy three or four so that I will have plenty when I need them. And then I loved this because I'm not a wine drinker, but I love the look of wine country and I love the colors and just everything about a beautiful bottle of wine. Although I don't drink, the bottles are beautiful. So when I saw these stickers, I know several people who actually do love a great bottle of wine. And so when I craft for them, this will be perfect. And then I found these beautiful snowflake um, Christmas stickers, but the colors of these, I also realized that if I wanted to do some embellishing on some of my Hanukkah projects, the colors of this actually lend themselves to just blending right in with some of those projects. And then we're going to go into the sticker sheets and I'm going through very quickly. There were a lot of sticker sheets and I'm going to bring this one out first because it falls in line with this sticker sheet. So we've got these sticker sheets and then we have the smaller ones. So you could actually mix and match those stickers. So then I got some 4th of July stickers so that I could have some patriotic 
paper to use. And this is not just for the 4th of July because I can pull this out and use it anytime that I want to inject some of my patriotism into my crafting. Father's Day stickers. Just spring and summer stickers. Dessert stickers. I wish I had had these when I was making those sweet little dessert boxes because these are perfect for that. Then I got some autumn themed stickers and I just love these because I love crafting for autumn just like I do my other holidays. But you can see just how fabulous these are and it's a mixture of photo play and simple stories. Then I have my Christmas stickers and these old world stickers are just so stinking cute y'all. And then I got a whole page of button stickers and you can pull these off and use these in your crafting. Just fabulous for that quick burst of color that you might need on your project. Then I have some more Christmas stickers. And then I have these Halloween stickers that are just oh so cute. And we've got some of those Argyles in there that I absolutely love. And this sheet is by Authentique. And you can probably go online and just Google these and find them locally. Or if you happen to be in the South Carolina area or the Charlotte area, visit Scrapbook Creations because I'm telling you the store will not disappoint. So now we're going to go into some of the papers that I got. And I picked up this Halloween sheet just because I like the way Halloween was presented all over it. And of course, I've got to have my cut apart sheets because I like crafting with cut aparts. And so I got a variety of sheets that I'm going to work with. And I picked this one up because when I saw it, this caught my eye here. This cut apart here says, have no fear of perfection. You'll never reach it. And that is so true. We can try to get close, but we should never strive for absolute perfection because we cannot reach it and we'll drive ourselves crazy trying to do so. Then I love this sheet because it's just so happy and so fun. And of course it's got the birds on it and y'all know I love the birds. And then these two, I just love the way that these look. I love papers that have script on them. And this one seems to have old letters mixed in with some pears and flowers. Just thought it was cute. And then this sheet here is perfect. Perfect for all season, all occasion crafting. But I saw spring in this because in springtime we have the rebirth and the new growth. And that's exactly what I saw with this sheet. And then I picked up a whole bunch of school type papers because I do love to craft for teachers and students. So I have these awesome pages here that are totally school themed. And then I have my school themed cut aparts. So sweet and perfect, whether I'm making something for the student or for the teacher, I have these fabulous cut aparts that I can work with. And then I decided I wanted to really stock up on some autumn papers because while I have some, I don't have a whole lot. So I went in for some of the autumn looks and you guys can kind of see just from this layout where I went with that. I've got my oranges, my browns, my golds, and then I've got sheets that'll work well with all of these. And that was the look that I wanted for this. So when I am shopping, I'm typically shopping to coordinate. So I might find, and I'm gonna flip this over so that you guys can now see the back side because I do have multiples of these pages. So I've got this awesome cut apart page that's going to work well. And before we had the lighter look, and on the back side, we have the darker look. So still, I have got autumn covered on papers and that's how I like to craft. So when I go shopping for papers, I don't just go shopping for one or two. Typically, I am shopping 
for either a whole seasons or all of the seasons and I pick out papers that will work well together. And then I'm gonna to jump to Christmas because I did pick out some Christmas sheets and I will show you guys just the standard looking Christmas sheets. We've got our birds, our Christmas birds. We've got our pages of Santa's and all of these are double sided. So I have multiples, like I said, and I can use you know, one of the pages. I can just cut apart and use it as the embellishment or use it to make those easy, simple cards that I make. And then this one, if I wanted to make it into, let's say a box top, this would be an awesome box top because you've got big old Santa Claus right there. And this is a sheet that I actually already had in my stash, but I was running low on it. So I was so glad to see this sheet. And I was glad because I love it, but I was also glad because it had the red line through it, 50% off. So last year when I bought it, I paid full price. This year it was 50% off and it was already a low price. So love this, love the backside. So then I was able to find this page and it's just a music page with Santa Claus. It kind of reminded me when I looked at it of um, Frank Garcia's Christmas in the Country, but this is no way associated with that. But it gave me that feeling when I looked at it and it also had that red line. So that helped with my feelings as well. And then when you flip it over, you've got your Christmas red plaid and it is just a fabulous paper. So then we have this wonderful, wonderful sheet here. And then on the back side, we have this. So you can see that I'm able to just go versatile with all of these papers. So on this one, cut aparts galore. And then when you flip it over, candy cane stripes. And you know we're going to be crafting with this because if you look back through my library, you will see during the Christmas season that I love to use a lot of red and white. And this year, when I saw these, I knew that I was going to incorporate some blues into my Christmas crafting this year, more so than I did last year. This sheet is absolutely gorgeous and it is by Color Play and it's called Silent Night. And I'm just going to scroll it so that you guys can see all of the beautiful, beautiful goodness on this sheet. And then when you flip it over, you've got this wonderful navy blue. So if you wanted to use the navy blue side to make something and then pop it up with one of these beautiful cut aparts, oh, that's just going to be fabulous. And then I picked up this striped sheet. First, I picked it up because it reminded me of a more masculine paper that I could use for Christmas crafting. But then when I saw the flip side of this, oh my goodness, look at how gorgeous this is. So these two will work very well together. Cut aparts will work very well together because they're all part of the same collection. And this is the Prince of Peace page from that collection. And it's gorgeous, guys, absolutely gorgeous. So this is a sampling of everything that I hauled from Scrapbook Creations in Spartanburg, South Carolina. So guys, if you happen to be in the South Carolina area at all, it is worth a day trip to Scrapbook Creations because the store is awesome. It's huge and they carry all lines, Graphic 45, Authentique, Simple Stories, Photo Play, you name it, they have it. I found it to be reasonably priced and I also found it to be more reasonably priced than some of the larger online stores that we go to to get scrapbooking papers and supplies from. So there is a small sample of all of the goodness that I got from Scrapbook Creations in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And then on the way back, we stopped by my favorite scrapbook store in Charlotte. Now I go to this store often, they know me there, but I wanted to share with you guys some of the things that I got. And I also wanted to highlight the store because they do have a wonderful selection. And during the time of COVID, our small brick and mortar stores are taking a hard hit. It is certainly worth a visit guys. And it is definitely worth 
your time to just stop by and look at what they have to offer. Make sure you check online to see what their COVID operating hours are because they might be changed. But definitely, definitely pay this store a visit. The store that I'm talking about is the Paper Crafters Muse and they are off of Independence Boulevard in Charlotte, North Carolina. Fabulous store. So I'm going to show you really, really quick what I was able to get from them this time. Um, I go in there so often, so I have plenty from them. But I love to go to get my Graphic 45 because they always have, you know, wonderful collections. And if you're looking for a collection that you can't find, if it's still in print, they'll gladly order it for you and let you know when it comes in. They'll do that on anything that they have that you're looking for that they're able to get. They'll place a special order for you and you can go by the store and pick it up. So I love this Graphic 45 collection, Fruit and Flora. And I went ahead and picked up another pack of the Bloom Ephemera because I was running low on that. And, and I've used it in some projects that I haven't really shared with you guys, but I wanted to get another pack of that. So the Fruit and Flora collection, gorgeous. But mainly I wanted to pick up some more Christmas papers because I want to make sure that I have a nice variety of Christmas papers to work with. I think I already did have a nice variety, but you know what? You can never have too many. So I picked up some more of my favorite candy cane paper. This one is more of a cream and a muted red, but it's gorgeous. And this paper here is Christmas Wonderland from Cartabella. And on the back side, we've got um, holly leaves, fabulous. And then I picked up some of the green um, paper here, but I mainly got it because I loved the stars on the other side in silver, but even this side is absolutely gorgeous. Then I love the 12 Days of Christmas paper by Echo Park. Just thought it was fun, and it's one of those papers that I'm really going to enjoy working with. Plus, I like the ledger side of this, but I also like just that it's chocolate with cream on it. Cut Aparts. Wouldn't be Christmas for me without cut aparts. And I really like these because they're not the bright white. They are more old world looking. And on the back side, we have got polka dots, but just the muted polka dots, not the bright in your face polka dots that we sometimes see at Christmas and that you'll sometimes see me use. But this is just going in a different direction of polka dots. Very calming polka dots, very relaxed polka dots and this paper is from Authentique. And then I picked up some packs of paper. I really did like this because I like the cut aparts in here and I love the look of these and I really do want to try to incorporate some blues into my Christmas crafting this year and this is just gorgeous and perfect for that. And it is by Chow Bella. And then I love my red and white Christmas and this Christmas is Santa Claus is coming to town. You get the awesome sticker sheet and then you get these beautiful, beautiful double-sided pages in your Christmas plaids, your Christmas stripes. You've got your um, Christmas greenery, but it's red. This is just a gorgeous pad to work with. So I picked up a couple of those and I am going to have some crafty fun. So. That is my haul video. And y'all know, I don't haul it just to make a video and show it. If I haul it, I'm going to craft it. So let's craft something. All right, guys. So to make the sweet little project that we are going to make using some of the paper that I just hauled and showed you, we are going to need a piece that measures eight and a half by 12. And it's going to be very simple what we will be doing with this. So on the eight and a half inch side, we're going to score it two and a half, rotate it to the opposite eight and a half inch side, score at two and a half. And I really should be scoring on this side because this is the side that I want to use. So I'm going to come back and score at two and a half, rotate it, score at two and a half. Then I'll turn it to the 12 inch side we're going to score every two and three quarters of an inch. So we'll score at two and three quarters. We're going to score at five and a half. 
Then I'm going to move this over just a little bit because my five and a half mark is in a really crazy spot on the scoreboard. So I'll score it there. So we're scoring at two and three quarters, five and a half, eight and a quarter, and then at 11. And I'm going over this paper several times with my stylus because it is a thicker paper and I want to make sure that I have a very good score. So I'll just use my big old spatula to go in and get those creases nicely burnished. Okay guys, so once we have everything burnished, you're going to have two small rectangular tabs right here on this end. We are going to come in to the first score mark and we're going to do a very deep angle cut and then we'll turn it and we'll do a slight angle cut. And I'll do the same thing over here. So I'm going to do a very deep angle cut and then I will release this piece by doing a very light angle cut. And you should have something that looks like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go around and free up every tab on this project. So I'm just going up to the first score mark and releasing that tab. And then I'll rotate it to the opposite side and release these tabs. And for some of you, this process is going to be very familiar because we just did it on a project that we did yesterday. All right, guys, so once we have our cute little box like this, I am going to bring in a template piece and place it down. Now on a previous box, you saw me place the template between the first and the second panel. This time I'm going to place the template only on the first panel. And the template piece that I'm using measures two and seven eighths by two. So I am putting just a little bit of glue on the back so that I can get that placed down. And I'll try to get it centered. Then I'm going to use my big old spatula and just work that into the paper. And then I'll use my finger blade to just trim out this template. And this is just a very quick and easy way to get a window template in your project if you don't have a die cutter. If you have a die cutter, you can pull that out and use it. I find this step to actually be easier than pulling out the die cutter because you can just pull out a pre-cut template, lay it down, cut it out. So then I have a piece of acetate that measures two by three and a quarter, and I am simply going to place some glue along the outer edge of this acetate. So then guys, I am going to take my acetate piece, lay it down over my opening, and so then I'll take my spatula, and I'm just going to press that glue, dragging it away from the window so I don't have to worry about cleaning up any of that opening. So now we have a beautiful acetate opening to our little box. So we are going to put this box together. The way that we're going to put the box together, I am actually going to go ahead and just reduce the center panels just a little bit because we don't need all of that bulk. So then once you reduce your panels, you're going to be left with something that looks like this. So I'll flip it over and I am going to take my glue, place my glue, and I can just go ahead and place it all over this panel. Then I'll bring up my piece here that's closest to the lid of my box, and I'm going to get it matched and stuck. So then I will flip this over. I can go on the inside with my big old spatula, get that stuck. Then I'll come over to the opposite end and do the same thing. So I am just going to bring this piece in and get it matched and get it stuck. Now we can add glue. I'll just fold that back so y'all can see what I'm doing. Now we can add glue to the front flap here. So I'll take my glue, 
place my glue so that I have glue at the top and the bottom, then I can just match it right here. And I want to make sure that I am matching the top part of this. If the bottom overhangs just a little bit, I can fix that. So then I'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to take my glue, place my glue all over this. And then I will fold over onto this piece, making sure that the top matches. And then I can just take my spatula and go in on the inside to get everything nice and stuck. Now on the bottom here, if you have any overhang, and I don't feel any, but if you do, take your scissors and just go along and snip off any overhang. So now you guys can see that we have a sweet little mini treat box. And it is so stinking cute, but we're not finished with it yet because I don't like how this shows. So of course we have to cover it. And I have some pieces already cut to be able to do that. I have two pieces that measure two and seven eighths by one and one half. And I have one piece that measures three and a half by one and one half. And all I'm going to do is I am just going to fold this in half just like this. And then I'll take it and I'm going to place that right here and that's just going to finish off my box um, real nicely and just cover up all of the rough mechanics of putting the box together. So I am going to take this piece, put it right there and I'll just use my finger to get it stuck and you can see how nice that is and it just ties into the inside of my box since I am using double-sided paper. So then I'll take this piece I'm going to place it down and test it to see if I need to remove any of it. And I think that I might need to cut off just a smidgen, not a lot. So always do a test fit. And if you need to make any cuts, you know, make them before you put that glue on. So then I'm going to place my glue and then I can place this down. and I'll do my final side. And again, I am just folding this, not even putting it in the scoreboard. I'm just giving it a fold. Then I'll take my glue, place my glue on here. And now all of the mechanics of putting this box together have been hidden. So now we have a very professionally finished designer box for those designer goodies that you might want to put in here. Now, some of you might want to put cupcakes, but I myself, I'm imagining double chocolate chip cookies just piled high in this box. So now I'll take my lid and just fold it over. You can take the lid, fold it over, close it with whatever you want to close it with here, or you can take your lid and tuck it on the inside just as I've done here. And of course, I'm going to add just a very simple decoration and we'll finish this off. So now I am going to go back to the sticker sheet. Okay guys, so in my sticker sheet, I have this really sweet sticker that matches perfectly with the paper that I have chosen here. So I am just going to put that down right here on the front as just a little embellishment for the front and it says, have yourself a merry little Christmas. That will adorn the front of my box. But then I want something for the top. And I think what I am going to put on the top of this box is this sweet little Merry Christmas sticker. Isn't that precious and so delightful. So see, I was able to take some of the papers that I hauled along with the stickers and create this wonderful individual sweet treat box that you can fill with all types of goodies and hand off at Christmas time or any time because remember, change the papers, guys. Any season, any reason, any gender. 
That's exactly how we craft on this channel. This box is good for all types of littles, minis, whatever small that you need a box for, this is a great little box. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed my fantastic haul video and I hope that you have liked this very quick and easy project on making a personal sweet treat box. So head on over to the kitchen and start baking. Y'all, I hope that you have liked this video. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys have a great day. Happy crafting and we'll chat later. Bye.